I'll be your host for today. Um, today we are back with another episode of How We Sold, and I have Gavin here with me today, and we're gonna be talking about how he sold the Calrose. How 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 we sold. So the Keros is a low-rise development freehold. Okay. Uh, this is one of the most popular projects that uh, most buyers are looking at in the Yo area. Why is it popular? Is it because it's a uh, freehold? Yeah, because I think that it's uh, quite rare these days to find something that is of a freehold nature um, that is right beside an MRT station, meaning that it's a sheltered access and it's less than okay. a minute walk. Uh, right into the MRT itself. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. So can you describe mm. to me um, what your unit was? Okay, so for this unit, this was a three-bedroom penthouse uh, type of layout. Uh, so this one for this project, it TLP'd back in 2008. I think the project age-wise, there wasn't any site plan with the colour code available. So we couldn't really tell the floor plans and the different layouts within the project. So our research team really had to do quite a bit of an in-depth analysis um, to go through what are the type of three-bedroom penthouses that we have over there at Kelrose. Right, is it because it's an older development so there wasn't much on the internet about it? Yes, it's because it's a bit of an older development. Right at the Yochukang area, right beside the Lentor region, most of the projects there are a bit of the older type of development. And for this three-bedroom penthouse at T.O.P. in 2008, it's actually still one of the newest ones over there. Right on the lower level, you will have two bedrooms and two bathrooms. Um, of course, your living, dining and kitchen area. And then on the upper level, you have uh, one more bedroom with the attached bathroom as well as the roof terrace. Right, so how big was the roof terrace? The roof terrace actually was quite a proportionate amount of space. I think for penthouse lovers out there, um, they would want that kind of open terrace space. But of course, uh, for some penthouse units out there in the market, they have a huge amount of that roof terrace right. space. In this case, I think it's a very um, right amount of outdoor space for this unit over here. So, um, upon your first uh, visit to the unit, what were some of the potential um, challenges that you highlighted? When we came into the unit, I think one of the first things that we kind of pre-planned for in terms of solving the obstacles that we might face uh, during the marketing and during the viewing period uh, is of course inbuilt jacuzzi. I think it's a very niche group of buyers who would want to have the jacuzzi. So I think for us, we already pre-planned to have renderings and quotations on uh, what it would look like and as well as the costing wise, if you want to just deck it up, do an outdoor lounge area or of course if you want to do a bit of a removal of the entire uh, platform costing wise would be a bit more but actually I think with these quotations on hand uh, it really allows the buyers to have a better sensing of how much the costing it would be for them if they want to convert the current unit into their ideal layout. So I think that really helps to like when the buyers, potential buyers come for the viewing they really have a peace of mind knowing that okay if this is a problem for them or if this is something that they're not really comfortable with you have all the information ready for them already which makes the whole process a lot easier. So another um, concern that we probably preempted for for this unit is because this one is a 2174 square foot 3 bedroom penthouse. Oh, so it's quite a big unit. It's quite a big unit. So this one was previously tenanted out and then after the and then left, it, the unit has been vacant for about six months. So I think the condition of the house, I mean the renovations wise, they were quite modern. They were done up fully by the owner, but because it's been left vacant for the past six months, it can be quite yeah. a bit dusty. Houses get a bit stale if you don't live in them for too long, right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. So we kind of pre-planned to definitely to have the uh, home staged up and as well we also brought in uh, a professional cleaner uh, to get the whole place cleaned up so when buyers come in they can feel that the house is still in a very clean state as opposed to if they were to walk into a dusty house it creates a very negative type of emotional. So for the staging wise it also helps buyers to visualize the space especially for penthouses over here you need to uh, have something to place onto the roof terrace instead of a blank uh, canvas over there. Buyers can't really visualize what they can do with that space but if you have sort of outdoor sets and furniture uh, right on that open space I think it really helps that uh, to make them feel that this space out here is a very usable type of space so Gavin, I heard that this unit itself, um, the price quantum was a little steep for projects in the area. Could you share with us a bit on how you overcame that? Actually, in general, the whole project here at the Carol's commands uh, quite a premium compared to the surrounding projects in the area, that whole Lentor region. Uh, reason being that it's of course freehold in nature and uh, most of the projects over there, they are the type of 99-year leasehold. And most of them already have eaten off about 20 years of their lease. 
Um, so being a freehold closest to the MRT station, it can command that type of premium uh, in that region. And I guess because of the fact that this unit is a bigger unit as well, so of course overall the quantum would go higher as well. Yes. So for the entire Lentor region right along Yochukang Road, uh, there's a lot of master plan developments going on. Uh, prominently, it's the Lentor MRT station that will be completed very soon. And that's on the Brown Line, right? Thompson East Coast Line? Yes, that's along the Thompson East Coast Line. And then uh, that is an underground shelter that leads you right onto the other side of the road, the other side of Yochukang Road. So that one over there, that is zoned for a future mix residential and commercial development. And right behind that, there's a lot of areas that has been zoned as well for future residential development. Yeah, so for that area, I think there has been a lot of development that has been planned for uh, for the future. So with all that being said, I think the buyer that eventually bought the place really saw potential in the whole entire area itself. Um, yeah. And I heard you sold it for above valuation? Uh, yes, so for I think for this unit, this one was sold at uh, 2.368 million. So this one for, for something outside the central region is quite a bit of the higher quantum type. But of course the pricing is justified for its value uh, being a freehold property right beside the MRT station. Uh, the buyers themselves, they are very familiar with the area. And then uh, I think they have been looking around, they came across our penthouse that just launched right on the market. They were one of the first uh, groups of viewers that also came to view. Uh, so they really love the place. I think if I recall correctly, they were uh, staying right around that region as well. So they are looking uh, specifically for uh, the Yochukang area. But of course, I think uh, a big role to play um, in terms of achieving uh, this type of pricing on the sale for this property uh, is a lot on the research component that our, our team has done uh, when we first saw this listing and we were preparing for the marketing of it. So one of them was, of course, early on when we mentioned searching of the different layouts within the project because, of course, the Keros is a bit of an older project. Uh, so we couldn't find uh, what are the type of layouts that we have over here. So I think our team has done a really great job to do their research. So this one was on hand. So of course, on top of that also, uh, our team has also done research on uh, the prices that is coming up right around the uh, Lantor area. And of course, if we expand out to like the Amokyo uh, region as well, what are the prices that they are commanding uh, right over there? So of course, having this research on hand, we were able to recommend a very attractive asking price. So that garnered a lot of uh, strong positive response when we kickstarted the marketing and this one was just sold right within the second weekend itself. The second weekend? Yes. Oh wow, that's very fast. Thank you so much, Kevin. I think we've covered quite a bit today. Um, any final thoughts that you have about this whole process and selling the cow roads? Um, yeah, I think one more thing is that uh, one big role to play in the sale of the property was of course the owners entrusting us uh, with the sale of the property. Uh, gave us really full control of the marketing, uh, gave us, passed us the keys, uh, let us have the home and of course viewings wise was very flexible as well depending on the buyer's timing that they come. So everything was really flexible. Um, we could do all the staging, all the cleaning and then of course this one got sold really quickly and of course it also came came on board with our recommended uh, pricing strategy to move forward uh, for the sale of this property. Great, thank you so much Gavin for sharing with us the experience selling the Calrose. We've come to the end of this How We Sold series. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys next time.